Show blessing, appreciator. Looking forward to what God has. So I'd like to direct your attention, if you're following along in the Bible, that's what we preach out of around here. All right, God's word, amen. amen. And uh, we're going to look into John chapter 3, a very familiar passage of scripture. If, you're, if you've attended a Christian church, hopefully it's familiar, it should be. Uh, the most famous verse in all of the Bible comes out of this chapter, verse 16. I'd like to read just one verse of scripture, John chapter 3, verse 3, and I have Reverend Torres pray. John chapter 3, oh, and I want to remind you, call your mom. <laughs> call your mom, it's Mother's Day tomorrow, all right? Let's not forget to do that. If not, I'll remind you in the morning. All right, God's good. Jen. Oh, so service tomorrow morning, 8.30. We have early morning service. We meet in the adjacent building over here. All right, You're, see, she found that out the hard way. So, and then we, we have, there's another right around the corner here they call it community building because we share this church with the Lutheran church. And then we'll be back here again tomorrow night at 6.30. So, in uh, John chapter 3, verse 3, just one verse of scripture. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And with the help of the Lord, I'd like to minister on the title of the message, Born Again. Say with me, Born Again. Amen. Born Again. Born again. Reverend Amen. George, please pray. Thank you, loving Father God, again, for every precious soul that is here tonight in your house, God. I ask you to please bless Pastor, O oh God, as he brings for your word by the help of the Holy Ghost, O oh God, with that authority and that grace that comes from above, O oh God. Give us receptive hearts and minds to receive what you have for us tonight, O oh God, and your will be done in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord's name. Amen. 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 You must be born again. In verse 1 of this chapter, and we're a big fan of Bible reading around here, we want you to read, your, read the Word of God because there's something about reading it for yourself. It makes a difference. So living for God, not living for church, we're living for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And I want, and it's really our desire that you fall in love with Christ, that you, He becomes the Lord of your life because if He is your closest friend, the friend is closer than a brother, if He is your best friend, your closest companion, then you'll be okay throughout the course of life because He'll always be there with you. Amen? Yes, Regardless of where you go, whether where, where life sends you, if you end up in a combat zone, if you end up stay of safe side, if you end up some city or town you've never been before, Jesus is always there. Amen. And so in this very first verse, he says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This is a very religious man. He was a leader. The Pharisees, there was three different sects of the of the Hebrew faith during this time frame. And of these three different sects, the three different uh, versions, you could, call them, you could call them three different denominations, really. Uh, the Pharisees were the most, they were the most strict. They held the most dearly and strictly to the Word of God. They were known for being this way. And the Apostle Paul actually came out of this group. And he came by night to see Jesus. He wasn't yet ready to publicly uh, approach God. He wasn't ready. Sometimes people are at different stages in their life. Maybe they're trying to feel out, the, they're trying to feel things out. You know, test the waters. They're not ready to jump in. And so he came by night. He came by night. And the Bible says that same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, it means master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And so Nicodemus was wise enough to realize that Jesus was from God. Whether he was the son of God, he did not know yet. But he knew that there was something about this fellow man by the name of Jesus that was divine. Something that he could not ignore. So the ruler of the Jews, this ruler, this ruler of the Jews, came to learn from the carpenter that built the universe. He came to, re, to, to talk to this fellow named Jesus that built the very world we live in. And he's very much alive today. He is the creator. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. You can find that in the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus made it all. And so... The next verse tells us in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so this man comes with a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding. But there's some things that you only get when God divinely touches the heart. God wants to take us to a higher plane. I'm not here to just uh, divulge to you a religion. I'm not here just to give you a list of do's and don'ts. Uh, we're not here to try to get you to conform to a certain religious set of doctrine. We're here to meet, introduce you to a person named Jesus. Amen? Yes. Amen? And when Christ becomes the Lord of your life, He'll impact the way you live. He'll impact the way that you live. You won't be the same anymore. And so Jesus was trying to tell him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. We need to have God divinely influence. There's a word called grace. How many of you have heard of grace before? 
Amen. It's a good word, right? Amen. We're saved by grace through faith. It's the gift of God. It's not, it's not of our own. This word grace defined means unmerited favor. It means God reached out and, and uh, attributed favor unto us that we did not earn. But it also means, also in that definition, a direct translation. If you were to look up the word grace out of a Greek dictionary, it says the divine influence. The divine influence upon the heart. It's when divinity, when God, the Holy Spirit, influences your heart and it's reflected in life. Amen? So God divinely influences the heart and it's reflected in the life. And so let's look a little more into this now. Jesus said this when he came in on the scene. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. There's a need to repent. The word repent simply means to turn around, to change direction, to head in a different way. Every person must make the decision, the conscious decision, to turn from their own way and to turn to God. To turn from their own way of doing things and to turn to God. And this is the situation. And so you know, one may say, well, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. When you are divinely influenced by grace, you willingly do it. You willingly do it. When something greater comes along, you'll let go of that which is lesser. And so he's saying here, you must be, you must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Moving along. Now the fourth verse. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? How is this possible? How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Obviously, the answer to that question is no, but he's, he's giving a spiritual illustration. He's trying to speak on a spiritual plane here. There needs to be a change. We were all born the first time. We all came from our moms. Amen? Amen. But we can't go back into mom's womb. That'd be kind of odd to even see, to even try to visualize that. Thank God. It can't be the case. So something has to happen. We need to be born. We were born physically. We were born carnally, so to speak. But we need to be born spiritually. Born again from above. A, div a divine influence upon the heart's reflection of life. And it needs to happen. It, it's something that has to take place for us to properly see God rightly. And it happens in all kinds of different ways in people's lives. In all kinds of different ways in people's lives. He says this. I'm going to read to you out of Psalms 18 and verse 35. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation. Thy right hand hath holding me up. Thy gentleness hath made me great. It's when God comes into your life and touches you in such a way that you can never be the same again. I don't know if it's happened to you, but it's definitely happened to me. Amen. I remember the first time I met God. Where were you at, Brother Rossi, the first time you met God? I was about nine or eight years old. I was in a Catholic church. This isn't a Catholic church, but I was in a Catholic church. They were teaching us the Stations of the Cross. We have to, you had to learn that in order to take communion. And while I was there, they were going through this very primitive story about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And while I was there, it became real. The story became real to me all of a sudden. And God began to deal with my heart at a very young age. And, and while I was sitting there watching these little film strips, and some of you are too young to know what these are, they would they have these little slides, they would have a little recorder that would play, and it would play a little story. And, and all of a sudden, you'd hear a beep, and the teacher would hit a button and would go to the next slide. And it was to teach you about the stations of the cross and about Jesus' road to, to, to Calvary and how he died on the cross for our sins. And as I began to watch that, the Spirit of God began to deal with my heart. I began to get sick to my stomach. I, I began to get bothered by the... It became real. It wasn't a story anymore. And, and it was just a simple thing. And God began to deal with my heart. And I fell backwards in my chair that day, smacked my head on that, on that porcelain floor there in that catechism class, walked out that... And I, I woke up in my dad's old... My mom and dad's old station wagon. With wood paneling on the side. That was a cool vehicle. Or not. And I remember driving home thinking, what happened to me? God had sparked something in my heart. From that day forward, I wanted to know God. He became my closest friend. Was I perfected? Was I where I needed to be? No, it was a long road. God was going to do a lot of things in my life. And you didn't come here to hear my story. But I want to tell you that we're not just sharing something with you that's intellectual. We're sharing with you something that's real. Amen. Many years would go by, many things would transpire, and finally uh, I would join the Army. And on the 4th of July weekend, 1994, I would meet that exact same God again. When I fell heavy under the conviction of sin, I, I was persuaded that I, if I died, I was going to go straight to hell. I was living a life that wasn't consistent with Christian doctrine and belief, and there I, gave, I accepted Christ in my heart a second time. I said, Lord, I need you to come into my heart. I know you died on the cross of Calvary to forgive me for my sins. I, I believe that you, and, and I had an uncle that showed me the Romans road, and so I accepted Christ in my heart that day, and all of a sudden, this pack of sin, and spiritually speaking, kind of rolled off my back. I got up, walked out the door. I was a brand new creation 
in God. I knew I was forgiven. I knew everything was right between me and the Lord. And now I was just trying to find a place to go to church. I said, Lord, when are you going to go to Mass? Because that's what the Catholics call it. That's what we used to call church. And a brother came by and invited me to church. It was New Testament Christian Church, one of our churches in Hinesville, Georgia. It wasn't church I was raised in, but it was there that God was going to do a great work in my life. And he was going to, and I began to realize it's more important what's written in our hearts than what's written over the doors of the churches we walk into. Amen. It's more important what's going on the inside than what we call ourselves. We may think of ourselves in a lot of different ways. And I'm not saying it's not important when you go to church. It is. But what I'm saying is that I would much rather you live like Jesus than say, this is what denomination I am. How many are with me? Amen. And so what we're preaching to you today is not a religion, but a reality in God. Amen. It's something bigger and greater than the... Nom- There's not going to be denominations in heaven. There's not going to be the, the Catholics on the east side and the Lutherans on the west side. And all. There's not going to be the, you know, the ghetto part of, of heaven. You know, not going to have the charismatics in one section. It's not going to be that way. There's only going to be one church up there. Amen? Amen. And if we're going to get there, we need to be born from above. We need God to be divinely influenced our heart. We need to be reflected in our life. And we need to be changed. There needs to be a transformation. You must be born again. How is this possible? This is what the question was from Nicodemus. Can a man go into his mother's womb? And Jesus answered in verse 5. He said this, Verily, verily, which means truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What's he referring to here? This water he's referring to the washing of the water of the Word. The Word of God is attributed to like water, so is the Holy Spirit. But we must first read the Word of God or hear the Word of God. It must penetrate our hearts. We must believe that Jesus is, amen, amen. that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. And then God, by, his, by the Holy Spirit, needs to come into our hearts and abide. And so first we receive the word of God, the literal word of God, but the spirit has to change. It's not just a mental ascent. It's not just like learning your, uh, your uh, technical manual in boot camp. It's not like just going through the, I was talking to Evan last night, talking about how they, they would learn things and they just recite them. He's in uh, training right now, be a drill instructor. But that, he was talking about back in boot camp, how they would just learn things. You know, they didn't even need to read the book, so to speak. You just learn stuff. And you could recite histories and things and talk about Chesty Puller and, and Barcelona and all these various different ones and Battle of Chapultepec. And you could, you know, you just, it was a second nature. I serve, right? Dave, was, Dave was always tells me that. And so all of a sudden, you just got, you just have it in your head. It's just there. But we, want, we don't want this to just be in your head. We want it to be in your heart. We want it to be in your heart. You must be born again. So we are born of flesh, the Word of God says. But we need to be born of the Spirit. The water, the washing of the water of the Word, the Word of God is real, it's true, it's right. When we read God's Word, it penetrates the heart. Let me give you an example. In Revelation, the very second to last chapter in the Word of God, this is what the Word of God says. It says in, in talking about the new Jerusalem and the new heaven, the new earth, it says God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's the good news, amen? Amen. He said, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And then he goes on, this is Jesus speaking, he says this. He said, he said, it is done, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, he shall be my son. And he goes on to say, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and, and murderers and whoremongers and the sorcerers not going around doing, there's no dark magic around here, okay? Amen? Amen. We serve God. No craziness. No craziness. And idolaters, we're not worshiping our uniforms. Not worshiping the Marine Corps. Say, Brother Ross, you don't worry about that. I'm not doing that. We're not worshiping our cars and worshiping ourselves. So I used to call the gym. It's the, it's the, the temple worship. People go in there on the mirrors. We call them the spandex club. They just sit in there. You, ever, you just want to work out. And this, kid, this guy sits there all day long in front of the mirror just lifting... Like, really? Can you get out of the way? I just want to work out. And they're worshiping themselves. Look at my muscles. People worship themselves. Worship their cars. Worship their homes. He says this, idolaters. He said, all liars. Christians ought to be truthful. Amen? Amen. 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 He says this, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so we don't want to be of that persuasion. We want to be of the persuasion that wants to live right, that wants to do right, that wants to go to heaven. I want to go to a perfect heaven. How about you? Amen. 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 I don't want to go to a place that's corrupt. So that means if God, Jesus said he went to prepare a place for us in John chapter 14. And so God has to prepare us for the place he's prepared for us. God has to prepare us for the place he's prepared for us. When we get up there, there's not going to be any corruption. There's not going to be any of these evil things. And so God right now has to begin the process of getting that negative, of getting that wickedness out of our hearts. 
And it's done, by, it's done when we're born again. When the Spirit of God comes on the inside, dwells in our hearts, and it makes a difference in our lives. We're born again from above. I'm going to ask you the question, has it happened to you? Has it happened to you? Let me continue to read on what Jesus said here in verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And then he says in verse 8, and this is the part I want to get to. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the, the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. We don't know where the wind comes from, but we know when it blows. Just this morning, just this evening, as we were getting ready to come to the church, my wife and I went downstairs to close up the windows at the serviceman's home. And I believe Clayton set the table. Thank you, brother, because he said he was going to do that for me. He set all these paper napkins out, getting things ready. We have fellowship afterwards. You're invited to come and, and have a blessing, have a good time. We play games. We have a good time. Sometimes we talk about God's word, whatever. But while I was down there, we noticed that a bunch of the napkins had, had were all somewhere around the floor. And, some had moved around. The wind had blown. It was obvious that the wind had blew into that room and had disturbed the place settings. Now, was I there when the wind blew? No. But I could tell by the evidence. And so it is when the wind of God blows in your life, there'll be an evidence. You don't necessarily know exactly how it happened, but you know that you've been touched by God because you're no longer the same. Something took place and you'll no longer be the same. And, and so I'm here to share you once the word of God penetrates the heart, you can never go back to the way you used to be because you're not the same person anymore. You're not the same person you all know instinctively. Uh, every one of you hear that? How many here in the military? It's just about everybody here. And Joe was, I was at one point. And so you all know you can't go back home. You're not the same person that left. You can go there, but you're not going back the same individual. Is that a fair to say? You're different. You're changed. You're Marines. You're sailors. You're different. Something happened. You, were, you weren't divinely influenced, but you were influenced by, by a drill instructor, right? You, you were influenced, and you're not the same anymore. Whenever you, hear the, whenever you hear the national anthem play, you respond differently than you did when you were a civilian. You're not the same anymore. You want to salute, or you, you, you just automatically want to do that. There's a patriotism. There's something there. You change. Something transpired in your heart. This isn't hard for you to understand. So it is. When you're divinely influenced by God, you're different. You're not the same. God's done a work in your life. He's begun to abide in your hearts, and you'll never be the same. Did it happen to you? Have you felt the tap on your shoulder? Has God come by and tapped you on the shoulder to where you'll never be the same? So will you never be the same? When you somebody, if I were to go up to you or up to anybody at this present moment and tap them on the shoulder, what would they do? They would turn around. If I were to come up behind you and tap you on the shoulder, you go. And that's what the word repent means, to turn around. And so Jesus comes to us. He taps us on the shoulder. He says, I've got need of you. I've got a plan for your life. Come. And if you'll turn around and you'll respond to that, You'll never be the same. And you'll begin to learn what it means to really live. You'll begin to learn as you repent and turn away from your own desires, turn to his. How many of God's good to you now? Amen. Amen. If God made us, don't you think God knows what we're made to do? Don't you know he knows how to satisfy the longing of the heart? He knows it's best for us. It happened to me. I remember the tap on my shoulder. He's tapped me several times since. And I just shared two of them with you. And I don't believe that I'm unique in any way. I believe that God loves you just as much as he loves me. And God will touch you is just the same way. I know tomorrow's Mother's Day. And I'm thankful for my mom. And I have something that the Lord laid on my heart earlier this week. And maybe even two weeks ago. And I just felt it necessary to share it with you. Now this was written before all of us were born. I applied probably even before, before Sister Cam and Brother Joe. But I want to read it to you because it's just as relevant today as it was back then. A minister tells of going to a hospital to visit a mother whose first child had been born. I think you're Ritzy right now, she's here. I, wasn't, I, I was going to share this before I even knew she was coming. You know, when you really get touched by God, you'll want to go to church. I'm like, leave that right there. When you get touched by God, when God taps you on the shoulder, you'll want to go to church. Amen. It'll be a desire. People don't have to talk you into it because God's your God and you want to come. You're just looking for a place to go. This minister tells of going to a hospital to visit a mother whose first child had been born. 
She was a distinctly modern girl, and her home was about average for young married, couple, married people. When I came into the room, she was propped up in bed writing. Come in, she said, smiling. I'm in the midst of house cleaning, and I want your help. I'd never heard of a woman house cleaning while in a hospital bed. Her smile was contagious. She seemed to have found a new joy, jolly idea. That's how you know it's old. They use the word jolly anymore. Right? I've had a wonderful chance to think here, she began. And it may help me to get things straightened out in my mind if I can talk to you. She put down her pencil and pad and folded her hands, and then she took a long breath and started. Ever since I was a little girl, I hated any sort of restraint. I always wanted to be free. When I finished high school, I took a business course and got a job, not because I needed the money, but because I wanted to be, my, be on my own. Before Joe and I were married, we used to say that we would not be slaves to each other. After we married, our apartment became headquarters for a crowd just like us. We weren't really bad people, but we just did as we pleased. She stopped for a minute and smiled ruefully. God didn't seem much, didn't mean much to us, and we, excuse me, God didn't mean much to us, and we ignored him. N neither of us wanted children, or we thought we didn't. But when I knew I was going to have a baby, I was afraid. That's how a lot of people are, you know, when God influences their life, they're afraid. What's this going to, what's going to happen? Talking about being born again. She stopped again and looked puzzled. It's funny, the things you used to think. How many can get an amen there? Amen. <laughs> the things we used to be afraid of that we realize they're the best things for amen. us. Yes, it's funny the things we used to think. People are afraid to go to God. You know, but I'm going to tell you, everyone who's ever gone, gone to God will tell you it was the best decision they ever made. Amen. Amen. It's funny the things you used to think. She had almost forgotten I was there. She was speaking to the old girl she'd been before this great adventure. Then remembering me, suddenly she went on. Where was I? <laughs> oh, yes. Both things are different now. Amen for that. I'm glad things are different. Amen? Amen? When God comes in your life, things are different. She said, I'm not free anymore, and I don't want to be. The first thing I must do is clean house. I can say that as well. I'm not free like I used to be, but I'm free in a different kind of a way. When God comes in your life, there's a different kind of freedom. It's not the same freedom. Though. It's not what the world calls free. She said, I'm not free anymore and I don't want to be. And the first thing I must do is clean house. Here she picked up a sheet of paper lying on the counterpane. This is my house cleaning, cleaning list. You see, when I, I take Betty home from the hospital with me, our apartment will be her home, not just mine and Joe's. And it isn't fit for her now. Certain things will have to go for Betty's sake. And I've got the house clean, my heart and my mind. I'm not just myself, I'm Betty's mother. I'm not just myself, I'm Betty's mother. You know, when Jesus comes into life, the Bible tells us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit comes in our life. We're not just our own anymore, but God is coming to our life and he's coming to our heart. And when you accept him by faith, he'll come into your life. He'll reside in your heart. Something's got to go. The pastor's not going to come over. I'm not going to come to your house and clean your house up. I'm not going to come into your life and say, start to micromanage you. But the Holy Ghost is going to begin to clean your heart up. He's going to begin to say certain music's got to go. He's going to begin to say certain books have to go. Certain friends have to be deleted off your social media. The Holy Spirit will begin to deal with your heart because he wants, because he loves you too much for you to live that old life anymore. Amen? Amen. There's certain things that just have to go because you're not the same anymore. And that, and she says, and this, and this is what she says, and that means I need God. How many can say they need God today? Amen. Amen. We all need God. God. Say, Brother Rossi, I don't need God. Yes, you do. We all need God. If you're in, Amen. if you need to be forgiven today because you've got sin in your life, you need God. If you've been forgiven and you're standing on top of a mountain, you need God to stay on the mountain. Wherever you find yourself, you need God. We need God each and every day of our lives. Amen. Whatever condition we find are unhappy and wise for the man or woman that realizes they need God. Amen. She said, I need God. This is what she said. I can't do my job without him. Won't you pray for Betty and me and Joe and for our new home? And see, this is where I believe it is today is you're here under the sound of my voice and I'm preaching about being born again. I don't believe you're weak like some people would try to say, well, this generation's weak. They're not strong like the generations before. I don't believe that. 
I believe you can live for God just like I can. I believe you can live for God just like the men and women of World War II, uh, men and women in Vietnam, the ones that have gone before us in the history books that we write. I believe you have the ability within you that God can divinely spark your heart and you can stand up in this present evil world and you can say, by the grace of God, I can live for Jesus. I can be what God wants me to be. I can stand in my generation and God is looking to us today, church. He didn't just, and we didn't, like I said, we're not inviting you to accept a religion. We're inviting you to accept Christ in your heart. Let God do a work in your life. And let God make you great. Let God do a work in your life. You'll never regret it. And you'll be able to say, I, I don't, I'm not free anymore and I don't want to be free. Oh, you'll be free in some ways. You'll be free from sin. Amen? Amen. But now you'll be, you'll be connected to Jesus. And you'll go where Jesus wants you to go. You'll say what Jesus wants you to say. You'll be a brand new creation in God. And this is what Jesus said to him as I get ready to close. As I get ready to close in this chapter. He said this, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. There's so many that will tell the story. Remember one man I was reading about it, how he was wrestling with whether God was real or not. He got on the bus, didn't believe that Jesus was real. When he finally got to his destination, he was fully persuaded he was the Son of God. Another person got on, a, got on a plane, didn't believe that Jesus was real. He wrestled with it. By the time they got where they were going, they were fully persuaded Jesus was the Son of God. Somewhere along life, God tapped them on the shoulder. They were never the same again. They found their purpose. They found their reason to live for God in this present generation and ultimately to see Jesus face to face. They want to see the one that tapped them on the shoulder. They want to see the one that breathed the breath of life into their heart and into their mind. And so this is what he, Jesus says. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master in Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how, can I, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. What was he saying? He said, I'm telling you what I know. This isn't head knowledge. It's a heart knowledge. This isn't just learning to be a part of a church, but this is letting God live on the inside. This is more than an affiliation with a religious denomination. This is more than just a name written on your dog tags. If you guys still wear them, I'm not sure what we used to. It's when God's written on your heart. It's when God's written on your heart. How many know Jesus has been to heaven? Amen. And he said he went to prepare a place for us. Amen. That where he is, we could be also. Amen. And God wants you to go to heaven more than you want to go. As I've shared before, because he's already been there. And I want you to be, if you're not saved, I want you to be saved more than you want to be saved. Yes. Because Amen. I already know what it's like to be saved. Yes. Amen. I know what it's like to have a friend that's closer to the brother. I know what it's like to walk with them during the course of the day, have a conversation with the Holy Spirit, feel his presence, uh, and walk with them. To, and, and, I, and it's just something, there's nothing like Jesus. And the more we come to God and the more we let the old life go away, yeah. the greater that relationship gets. Hallelujah. The more powerful it becomes, the more intimate and closer we get to the Lord, the greater friend he becomes. And, we be, and when Jesus is close to our hearts, we were indestructible. All things are possible then that believes. Amen. Amen. All things are possible then that believes. We need to receive from God a new spirit, a birth being born again. Have you been born again? Have you been tapped on the shoulder? Has God, in, in, has God influenced your life? I believe he has. I believe God spoke to your heart before you ever made it to this church. And I believe that through the course of the preaching and the sharing of God's word this evening, God's confirmed what you already know. That God has something special in your life and God wants to do a work in your life. And as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to God, as Sister Rossi begins to play, as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to God, as we begin the altar call portion of the service, the Holy Spirit's here right now. He's here right now. See, maybe say, Pastor, I don't, I'm not born again and I want to be. Ask Christ in your heart today. Ask him into your heart. Return from your sin. Turn from those things that are inconsistent with heaven. And turn your heart to Jesus. He said there in 1 John, he said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you'll confess your sin to God today, he'll wash you, he'll cleanse you, and make you every whole 
And if you'll receive him, he'll come and live inside of your heart. And the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power or authority to be called the sons of God. You'll never be the same. From this day forward, you'll never be the same. You'll be better. You'll be greater. Because God's called you to a better purpose, a better existence, something that's greater. This altar's open right now. Let's all come find a place to pray. Let's seek the Lord while he may be found. The Spirit of God's here. Just come and pray and worship the Lord and let God be God in your life. Ask Christ into your heart and be born again from above. God bless you as you find a place to pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your love and mercy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for those who have come to you. Lord, wash them. God, cleanse them. Lord, receive them unto you.